Hello, my Facebook family. So um, we are going to start with our little cord restore today. And um, I'm hoping that I'm in the screen because I'm not doing this from selfie side. And so I'm gonna give it one more shot really quick and I'm gonna go out of the camera. I'm gonna come right back into the camera view and just kind of see where I'm at because I forgot to check it out. Just a second, hold on right there. back in the frame now so anyway so I want to make sure that you guys are doing well so make sure that you text or message me and let me know how you're doing just say hi I'd love to interact with you in any kind of way we can and um, I want you to just be able to have um, be able to come right now to um, some sessions and be able to have some normalcy and some consistency I see one of the biggest issues is we're focusing on some things that are great that are keeping our minds occupied, um, which include things like um, doing crossword puzzles or doing um, jigsaw puzzles, knitting, more crocheting than I've ever seen before, um, cooking and so on, some great um, tools, a lot of interaction kind of with people, I'm sure on Facebook and Instagram and texting and calling and that kind of stuff. But the, a, a bunch of complaints I'm getting, a bunch of things I'm hearing back from all over the United States from fr friends and clients is, neck pain, hand pain, and hip and lower back pain. These are, these do not need to happen. If you move and if you keep yourself moving differently, these will not sideline you. Because the more you sit, the more you stay still, the more you disconnect, or just do the same things over and over again, the more that you're gonna find that you're gonna be stuck, sore, tight, I'm tired. Um, and I mean tired. Your body is, is used to putting out a lot of energy, going to work, coming back from work, shopping, doing all different types of things. And you're not, some of you. So I want you to move around. If nothing else, you breathe for three minutes a day. You do your head nods and head turns and you do some sort of cross crawling or knees rocking or rolling pattern for three to 10 minutes a day. Boom, done. I just gave you your workout. So you can send me a hundred dollar check later on. But today what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a core and restore. We're going to do a core and restore that is about um, 15 minutes or so long about um, some core movements. Very traditional, simple stuff. You can add a band if you want. And then we're going to move into some restorative movements. The movements that will help the hips, shoulders, back, neck, and so on. So let's get going. Join me on a mat or um, you can do this without a mat. Just on your carpet. It doesn't particularly matter. And let's just start with our feet out in front hands behind the back of our knees and our shoulders back. So again, if you're joining us right now, we're going to do core and restore and we're going to give your body some connection to the core, a lot of lower back issues, a lot of neck and shoulder things going on. And then we're going to do more restorative movements. They're going to help connect you a little bit deeper to help you feel like you've got a little bit more mobility and just kind of juice up that, those joints. Hands underneath the knees, big deep breath in and exhale. Just settle. Again, inhale and exhale. Shh. Couple more. Inhale and exhale. Think of long through the crown of the head. Allow the space between your neck and your shoulders to open the space between your collarbones to broaden, not just pull back, but down and away from your ears. Your rib cage to expand. Your belly to soften and draw the diaphragm down. Your hips, even though you're in this bent position, just kind of feel that even slope to your hips. If sitting up like this is a little bit much, you can sit with your hands back and just allow your even your biceps and your forearms to get a little stretch. And then coming in again, let the chin drop to the sternum, let the chin lift, let the chin drop and lift. Get long in the neck, across the collarbone, through the mid back. Take your hands behind you again. Look over your right shoulder. Look over your left. Look over your right. 
I'm not trying to force the rotation, just allowing myself to turn. And then let's come down towards the ground. Slow yourself down, head down, chin in, knees bent. So your shins are almost um, vertical, your shoulders are back, your palms are up. And just begin to lift your toes and then lift your heels, lift your toes, lift your heels. So joint by joint, we're just gonna kind of open up the body a little bit, simple movements, connect to the body. Slow the movement down. If you just kind of feel like you're just doing a movement, not feeling it, not noticing what's going on. Good, from there, you're just gonna tuck the pelvis and tilt the pelvis. So remember on a tuck and a tilt, it's not about your feet or your hamstrings, shoulders back or anything. Just let the pelvis move. The pelvis is a really dynamic um, um, bone segment area, the body. It's two very large wing-shaped bones with a tight triangle of a bone right down through the center of it. And then it attaches into this super dynamic, of course, your spine, and then extends out of it your pelvis, your, your femur, which has super big motion and rotation in it. If any of those areas are locked in, stuck, pulled, tightened, you're gonna get twisting in the pelvis. Something's gonna to wanna to give, and then you get pressure in the lower back, down the sciatic line, inner thigh, and even up to your shoulder. Just a nice gentle pelvic tilt and then pause. So you're not pausing in compression, you're not pausing in an arch. Think of just pausing level pelvis to the ground and let's begin to just drop the knees left and right. So you can feel those femurs moving inside the hip joints. It's not so much how we're we getting into the lower back yet, but are we getting into and we finding that beautiful range and then subtly getting information into the spine so the spine also gets a little bit more challenge continue to find a deep breath good slowly begin to walk your knees wider and wider and maybe even move slower good and then go ahead and go smaller and walk them back in Good. And it kind of wiggles your pants down. <laughs> Good. And then your feet are back to their neutral position. We'll take your hands down by your side and lift your hips up and then drop your hips down. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. One is just grab, is just curling and articulating the spine up and articulating the spine down. And the other way is to lift just straight up and back down. No articulation, just really just a lift of the glutes now from this position, this can go quite high. You can bring your hips all the way up or you can just lift the hips off the ground. We're just trying to find a range of motion that works. No compression on the lower back. Not trying to get too deep, too quick, too fast. A couple more. And last one here. Good. And then just bring those arms up and then slowly take those arms out wide. So you're keeping those arms below the level of the shoulders. So it's not quite to an A-frame, but it's also not just down, it's not above into a kind of a deep Y or anything like that either. Just below the line of the shoulders, but you're not going quite to the ground. Open those fingers out, pull them away from each other, let the hands come back in. And then now let's alternate one arm over the other. So just going joint by joint, kind of working the spine, working the arms, the shoulder girdle. And the moves are all nice and simple, but simple is good. Simple isn't necessarily easy. Simple isn't necessarily for those who don't have better things to do. Simple is just simple because very often more complicated, we stop listening, our body starts freezing up and we stop paying attention what our body's actually asking us to, which is to do, simple. One more time, and then let's just take some circles. So think of your hands moving underneath a ball, right split through the middle, and around the bottom side of a ball. So you're only going about, I know this is math, and don't everybody said there would be no math, 
but we're going to go over your head. Your arms are going to go just out of eye line and then begin to circle around. Palms stay towards the sky like you're shaping the bottom of a ball. Then back up through the center and around. Up overhead and around. Two more up overhead, circle around. And then last time up and overhead and circle around. Take your arms to your side, bring your right knee and left knee to a tabletop position and begin to do a single leg drop. In Pilates, this is called changes. I don't know why it's called changes other than each leg changes position with the other. Maybe that's why. There's so many moves like eagle's pose. I don't know that that looks like an eagle or I don't know. There's Lord of the Dance, kind of looks like Lord of the Dance. You know, you have your foot up behind you. You're holding your, he your, your head back. That's maybe a Lord of the Dance. That's maybe why I can't dance. Breathing. Two more each side. Last one, each leg. Good. Hold both legs up, and let's begin to drop your legs right and left. Now, when you're going right and left, watch the hips. So as you drop to the left, make sure your right hip is lifting evenly with your left so your legs aren't shifting on top of each other. You're not pulling the pelvis out of position. You've got two more to your right and left. Over here, right and left. Good, and then back to center, hold. Take those arms over the head. We'll add the arms with the leg. So a nice, easy dead bug. Again, we're just adding in joints at a time. The idea behind core work is core work has become this thing where everything has to be held <coughs> hard and tight. Your belly better be all pained and tight after the end. But in reality, core work is just stability work. What can you stay stable while something else moves? Simply enough. What can you stay stable as something else moves? You've got three more each arm and leg. If you want to add more breath, shh. You can slow the movement down. One more. Hold those arms and legs together. Bring your head and chest up. You're going to take both arms and legs away from each other and then touch the knees. Both arms and legs away, touch the knees. Both arms and legs away, touch the shins or the knees. Eight more. Think of long and extended. You've got five more, and four, and three, and two, and last one. Hold out. Here's our stabilizing. Hold ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Swing those arms in, and let's rock. So just moving the spine up and down. Kind of like a giant rolling, but we're doing the rolling and the ground is doing the staying in place. Do three more. Two more. And last one is hold up that rock. See if you can stay in a boat pose. Body's nice and tall, chest is lifted. Hold 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and down, grab a band, just place that band on both feet. If you don't have a band, no problem. Roll yourself back again, and let's do those dead bugs. So this time on a dead bug, instead of extending your foot or lowering your foot to the ground, you're just gonna saw your leg straight out. Ideally, you won't lower your leg below the line of the other foot, that's stable. You want to try to track the heels with each other. You've got four more and three and two. You've actually got more after this. And last one, we've got another four because that's each leg. Three, two, and last one. Good, go ahead and pause. Let's take the band off, put it on just one wrist. I'm putting it on my left wrist. I'm going to hold with my right hand and bring those knees up. And I'm just going to, as my left leg goes out, I pull with my right. And again, pull with the right. Exhale, pull. You've got four more. 
and three and two. Last one right here. Hold out. Hold ten. Nine. Slide those shoulders down and back. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And release. Let's go to the other side. So I've got the band now going on my right wrist. You can place it down as low as your maybe your right forearm. And then hold. Bring your right and left knee up. So you're really just moving out your, your right leg. So as my right leg goes out, my left hand pulls away from center. You've got eight and seven. Keep the shoulders down. Oops, and six and five. Pull that band away. Exhaling. Last two and last one. You're going to hold out for ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, and release down. Good. Go ahead and take the bands on both hands this time. Both arms are going to pull out away from each other. So you're pressing towards the outside edges of the room. Hold here. Lower your right foot and left foot. Three, and two, and last one. Each side. Good, just rest for a second. Now, as your right leg goes down, we're gonna take the band overhead. And then as the left leg goes down, we'll take the band overhead. So alternating right and left, arms press wide, shoulders pack in. As the left arm goes down, the arms go overhead. Keep those shoulders away from the ears. Four more. And three. And two. Last one, each leg. And down. Good, nice job, guys. Let's put those, that band down for right now. Just rest the shoulders. So we're gonna do a back reset variation. It kind of also is kind of a dead bug kind of a thing because we're working on pressure over time, which is a load. So time and pressure is a load. That's also power, time, pressure over time. So we go big, big pressure, little time, power. If we do big pressure over a long period of time, it's power, but power under control. <laughs> physics. Um, I think that's physics. Yeah, it's physics. All right. I, I, I can't tell you how to do the shape of a cup. That's calculus, right? Yeah. That big E just throws me off. All right. So hands on the knees, you're, you're, you're meeting pressure. So your heels can drop down if you need to, so you don't have to have your feet up. Chin down, shoulders down and back, press into your knees, press your knees into your hand for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. So you can feel that pressure building in your stomach. So let's just do one side. So again, start with the pressure, take your hand off the right leg and press into your left leg. Hold 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. We'll do the same thing. We'll start with both sides under pressure. Inhale, exhale, shh, press, press, and then take your left hand off, place it on your right hand. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. Now we're gonna take the left hand, place it behind the right leg, sorry, the left hand behind the left leg, right hand on the right leg, and press and pull. Don't let the knees move. Inhale, exhale, 10, nine, eight, seven. Press, pull, press, pull, press, pull. You've got four, three, two, and release. Good, switch sides. Right hand behind, left hand on top, inhale, Exhale, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and release. So we're going to take both hands to one side, or I'm sorry, your opposite hand to one side. That op the, the, the free side is going to do the dead bug. So we'll start here. You can have your head up or head down. Meet the pressure to begin with. 3, 2, and then reach out and back in for 8. Keep that pressure on that left knee. Push in with that left leg. You've got four more and three 
and two, last one, good, and release. So now the left hand goes to the right leg, right arm and left knee are free to move. Press first, get that pressure there, and then eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one, overhead and back in. Good. Now you're going to do the same thing with your head up. So hold the head up if you can. If that's not available to you, your head stays down. Meet the pressure first. Find that tension point and reach out for eight and seven and six and five, four, three, two, and last one. Lower head down and we'll go to the other side. Hand on your knee, arm is up. Make sure that shoulder is down so you're not shrugging up the shoulder. Press in, meet the pressure, head up. You've got eight, seven, six, five, four. Meet that pressure, three, two, last one. Good, and then go back down. So the last one we're gonna do gets all into crazy town, but you're gonna go right hand to left knee, left hand to right knee. Try to meet that pressure. If you want to get your forearm all the way up there or touch with your elbow, that's fine. It's just a longer distance to reach. So you can do this head down or head up. We'll do it twice. So right hand to left and reach out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Last one, good. So this time with the head up, I'm gonna raise my legs a little bit so it's a little bit easier to make that transition. Bring the head and chest up, bring your legs up a little bit higher. Start with my right hand on my left knee. So lower down and then lift, lower down and then lift. Push that leg into your hand. Four. And three, last two, last ones each side. Good, and then back down. Good, nice. So most of the stuff done on our back, we're gonna move to our front side all the way around to work some extension of the back. Body nice and long, forearms are down. Just lift that chest up, pull the belly away from the ground, Draw the chin in, try not to let the belly drop. And then again, lift the chest up and then back down. Two more, lift the chest up and then back down. And last time, up and back down. Arms stretched out, legs stretched out as best you can. Right arm and left leg lift, left arm and right leg lift. Only lift as high as it's comfortable for you. Breathing, I have my head off primarily so that you can hear me. Two more each side. Then we're gonna hold, hold 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and down. And then the other side, hold up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and down. Well done. So we're done with our core. We're going to move into some restore. We'll start with some head nods. So the eyes, when the eyes get stuck in position, the breath usually gets stuck in position also. Also, the eyes take on, I don't know, something about like 50,000 images all at one time. And they can see, it's something insane, like 50,000 pixels per per capture, per screen capture, where like even the best cameras maybe are, I think they're like 600, the best, best camera, 6,000 pixels or something like that. So 50,000 to 6,000 is quite a dramatic difference. So your eyes register so many things. And if you're not moving your eyes, you're not moving your brain. And if you're really not moving your brain, you're not moving the rest of your body. Let's look over one shoulder. Feel that range all the way down into the hip wall. Look up as best you can and look over the other shoulder. 
Use those eyes. Ideally, your tongue is on the roof of your mouth and your mouth is closed. And I got something in my eye. We don't want something in our eye when we're trying to use our eyes. That is counterproductive. Good, go ahead and bring your right knee and left knee up. We're gonna go real wide. If you can have kind of a frog position, do so. And we're gonna come forward and back into kind of a frog rocking position. If you need to have your toes more curled under, do so. If you need to have your legs closer, do so. Back and forth. Couple more. And then walk your hands all the way back, bring your knees in, and let's just stir around. So we'll start on our hands. And then we'll go the other direction. Head up, eyes looking all around. And then we'll be here and we're gonna come down to our forearms. Do the same thing. Now those shoulders get pulled and tight. I need glue on my, my pant, on my shirt length. It's just so much contrast between a black shirt and a white backside. And then let's go all the way around again. Circle those shoulders. And then go the other direction. And then we're gonna rock forward and come up to our hands. Come back to our hips and to our forearms, come back to our forearms and our hips. So forearms to palms, back to your hips, move to your forearms and again. Two more. And last one. Good. Come all the way, all the way in. Let's go into our back again because we're going to do a figure four stretch. I think that's one of the more needed stretches right now. And then there's a Laura Altabelli special. And maybe I'll do a video on that um, bretzel that we've done before. That's one of Nicole's favorites. Cross the ankle over the knee. So I got my right knee, my left ankle is over my right, and I'm just going to start with a little bit of gentle pressure outward and kind of slightly up. So I can take my hand and I can kind of slide my hand up as I slightly push out. It just gets that hip to just kind of relax a little bit. And then go ahead and pause all the way out. And we're just going to rock back and forth. Allow the knee to drop towards the ground on each side. You're gonna feel that pull. So there's so many variations of this stretch on your, on your stomach, it would also be referred to as pigeon pose. On your back, it's a figure four or, um, I don't know, whatever it is, threading the knot. Two more and last one. Go. So you're gonna take your left foot that's on the top of your right, you're gonna to begin to drop both legs to the full right side of the body. So your left glute is getting that kind of that stretch. You can use the right leg to hold the, the left in position. And again, press outward and upward. At the same time, I want you to sink back into your left shoulder. Getting long, opening, breathing. Good, let's release really by just unthreading the legs, coming back to center. Drop both knees in together and just kind of tick tock the knees back and forth to the inside, different range of motion. For some, outward feels a little bit better, more comfortable on the hips, that's fine as well. Or you could do more inward if you need a little bit more stretch there. So then let's take the right ankle, place it over the left knee. And again, just begin to press away. 
up and away. You can just kind of see how my leg even slightly bounces back, giving it some resilience, some springiness in that joint, and then hold, slide and hold. Keep the foot flexed to help stabilize the knee. Keep the chin towards the sternum. Big deep breath, exhale, and then begin to slowly rock from side to side. So again, I'm going to take now my, my everything over to the left side. I'm going to flip around here just a little bit. And again, everything's still going to go to the left side. Partly so you don't get the butt. So when I roll, you don't face the butt side of the body. You face the chest side of the body or the face. <laughs> Hopefully I'm still in frame because that will be silly if my head is completely cut off here and but you can hear me but can't see my face. This is always the awkward part of videoing stuff when you're not watching it. And then release gently and slowly and come back to center. Bring those knees into your chest. Just give them a nice good pull and release and a pull and release. One more time. Pull your knees in and release and let's stir the knees clockwise. Both knees go in the same direction at the same time. And just find that even pulling, even rotating, finding that pelvic, kind of the edge or the rim of the pelvis. And then pause and go the other direction. You can use your breath as an indicator if you're going slow enough. Can you do one full inhale on a circumference and then one full exhale on the next round? and then draw the knees again into the chest. Lower the right, left foot to the ground, extend the right leg up, and then just point and, and flex that right foot. Pull the right hip down as if you have a strap and you could pull or sink that right hip into the ground. Hold the leg, breathing, and just rotate the hip. And then bend the knee again. Exhale as it's comfortable, bring the head to the knee and then lower back, and let's bring up the left leg into the chest, hold the left leg in just for a moment, and then extend the left heel, point and flex. So in this deloaded leg position, you do have the chance to pull that ankle, really work that flexion, get that toe to come down towards the shin, and then roll the ankle, And then if you can release, if you need to lower the leg a little bit, do so. So you're not fighting the angle of the leg and just move from the top of that hip. And last one, bring your knee into your chest. Just give it a nice good hug. And then lower back. And then again, knee into your chest, head to your knee. And then back. And we're gonna go back with both knees into the chest. Let's go back to that back reset that we did. Place both hands on the tops of the knees. Press, equal pressure, knees to hands, hands to knees. Exhale, shh, if you can, bring your head up. Shh. Now lower your head, take your right hand behind, left hand stays on top, inhale. Exhale, shh. Shh. Inhale, lower back, switch sides, left hand is behind, right hand is on top. Inhale, exhale, shh, and then inhale. Bring the knees in, drop one foot at a time, and then let's roll to one side. And bring yourself on up, and we are done. So a little core, a little restore, giving you an opportunity to kind of challenge yourself without overdoing it. Again, with all of that's going on right now, allow yourself to do something, not everything. We are able and capable of so much, but sometimes we do too much and we kind of suffer in other ways that seem unconnected, but I don't want you to add stress on the stress on the stress, but I do want you to move. I do want you to breathe. I do want you to look around. So whatever you can do, do something that challenges your, those three things, your breathing, your eye movements, and, a bit, and the ability to cross the midline of the body and allow yourself to find that you are able to rest and restore even when things are out of your control today. 
All right, have a great day, guys. Tonight at 5, I've got kettlebells, a little bit more core, and a little bit more restore tonight, and we'll, and we'll get into it. If you don't have a kettlebell, you can use a dumbbell. It'll be different, but I'll give you some modifications, or also you can do some body weight workout as well. I hope you guys are well. Again, um, text me, call me, let me know how you're doing. I love hearing from you guys. Um, and if this is going out and somebody's out there hearing and seeing this that I don't know that's on this, that's fantastic. And I will also send you a strong and able shirt too if you send me your address. So anyways, stay strong, stay able, bent on fitness. We're going to meet under that tree pretty soon. And I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.